Hello, good morning. My name is Shimon Elara, and I welcome you to another edition of Sunday Morning Dose. Um, this is where we look at God's word from the perspective of Christ. We have a saying that if it does not make sense to Christ, it shouldn't make sense to us. And today we'll be looking at um, how we should deal with our night, how we should interpret the night. The night here signifying an end to a particular day, an end to a situation, an end to an era. And 2020, it just uh, December is the last month of 2020, which signifies that in about 25, 26 days to go, there will be an end to 2020. So how should our response, how should we react to 2020 going? So let's see how Christ reacted to an end to his stay here on earth. So let's go to John chapter 14, the book of John chapter 14. Yeah, here is Christ hinting his disciples about what would happen and the need for them to stay put as he prepares a ground. In chapter one, in verse 1, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So how should you react to an end? Let an end not trouble you. Here is Christ. If you, if you must react well to a night or an end, you must make sure that your heart is not troubled. You must make sure that you do not personalize the failures, that you do not allow those things to get to you. You must make sure that your heart is not troubled and you must believe in God and believe also in me. You must believe in God. You will see how that is vital in a short time. You must believe in God. Why is it that at night or an, towards an end to something, we must make sure that we maintain a particular frame of thought, which is not to be troubled, not to worry, uh, and also believe in God. Uh, you will see in a short while. So in verse 2, he said, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. So he casted a vision, a vision of something that will be happening very soon. Yes, very soon. Yeah. And how should you respond to the night? Make sure that your heart is not troubled. Make sure that you believe in God and you believe in Christ. And let your hope be alive. Let your hope be alive. The hope of a mansion in heaven. Let it keep you alive. Let it keep you living. You know, it, it is true that death does not necessarily mean, physical death does not necessarily mean an end to an era. Just like life itself does not even guarantee living. Some are alive but yet not living because they've lost hope. So Christ is saying, after you believe in God, after you believe in me, let the hope of what I'm about to do in heaven, let it keep you alive. Verse 3, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. That where I am, there you may be also. These things should keep our hope alive. But why should you believe in God in your night state? Let's go to Genesis before we go to Genesis, let's read 
someone who also believes in God. And let's hear his response to the night. They're talking about King David, Psalm 30, 139, verse 12. The Bible says in KJV, it says, Yea, the darkness hides not from you, but the night shines as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to you. Talking about God, David is saying here that darkness and light is the same to God. Why should you believe in God? Let's round it up. Let's see how God himself talks about light and how he dealt with darkness. So in Genesis chapter 1 verse 5, KJV, And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. I take it again. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. So there was darkness. God turned it into night, bring the night to be evening, bring the day to be morning, and then eventually God makes sure that even the darkness and the light became day. So when we go through 24 hours, we don't say how was your night when you're talking about a day, how was your night, we say how was your day. So when we had gone through a day, light inclusive, darkness inclusive, what we rather say is not how was your night or how was your day, how has your night been? What we would say is that how has your day been? Because everything together is now day. Let me read it again. KJV. Genesis chapter 1 verse 5 and God called the light day meaning light is supposed to be day but when God was through with darkness making it night turn it into an evening it became a day meaning he started walking alike so let's read what Psalm had to say again Psalm 139 verse 12 it says even the darkness is reversion. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. So why should you believe in God? Because of the perspective God has to bring to your night. Yes, you need that perspective. <laughs> that perspective is important. Uh, the perspective God has to bring to your night that in the night situation you know you are sure that everything (laughs) both the night and the day are working for the common good of a day you need that perspective not to judge your life by the night time and not to conclude on your day by the light but to combine the sequence of the happenings of the day the sequence of the happenings of the day includes morning and evening to form a right perspective and energy towards a particular day so you need God. So you something happened to you. It looked like something that was going to work against you. You believe in God. And God helps you to see the greater good of it. And you begin to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It takes that perspective to see that all happenings in your life from the beginning to this point are all working towards your own good it takes god's perspective 
See, many people try to uh, look for several ways to cover this, but it takes God. It takes God to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It takes God. It takes God's perspective. It takes God's insight into that day to turn it and change your perspective around. No wonder when we pray and we receive answers to prayers, when we say we pray and we receive answers to prayers, not necessarily that the situation disappeared or the situation has changed, but that we have received a new and fresh perspectives towards the situation, that the situation is not as overwhelming as it, as it was before we prayed. And that is what necessarily we call answered prayer, that the peace that surpasses the understanding of men comes into your heart and gives you a perspective that is beyond the norm. So I hope this week you will channel your energy of 2020 I don't, I, into the last night of 2020, which is December, the end of an era, and begin to channel it into believing in God and to see what God has to say to you about the happenings of this night. And as you forge ahead, you will receive a new fresh hope because you would understand that there was a plan from the beginning of what God will bring and do in your life. Till we see some other times next week, same station, this is Sunday morning dose. Keep living like Christ. Thank you.